<laughs> oh, hey, son. Oh, what you got going there? Oh, just working on some programming homework. Oh, hey, your old man used to go back in the day. <laughs> uh, mind if I have a look? Um, sure, Dad, but uh, I'm not that great. Oh, blubber nugget, son. It can't be that bad. Huh? Uh, Dad? Everything okay? <coughs> oh, uh, uh, hey, uh, it looks like you got a lot of if-else statements there. Uh, uh, it'll slow down your program a bunch, don't you think? Why don't you do what your brother Blobby did and use a switch case, eh? Oh, well, I was thinking about it, but I don't think it really matters that much. Oh, ho, 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 son. Oh, ho, son, oh, son. I bet you're wondering a couple things. What are switch cases? Why are they better than writing long strands of else if statements? Why do my parents love my brother more? Well, that brings us to today's topic, switch statements. In our last video, we talked about if-else statements and how they can help direct the behavior of our program. While if-else statements are a staple for handling conditional logic in your program, it's good to know that you have other options for different situations. Sort of like how there's different tools to use in your toolbox. Well, switch statements are one of those tools. Switch statements are a conditional statement that compare a given value to a list of cases. If the given value matches one of the case's value, the program will only process that case's code. A case is a block of code with a value assigned to it to help identify the block. To write a switch statement, first, you initialize it with the word switch. Then, add a value that you want checked within a set of parentheses. You can check for things like numbers, words, letters, or variables. Then, inside some curly braces, you would add different cases with their own code to handle different outcomes. And you gotta make sure the values of your cases are of the same data type as whatever you're checking for. So if you're checking a variable that has a character data type, your cases can only be identified with a character value. Once we have a value in the parentheses, the program will jump to the case that has the same value as the one in our condition. So if your value is equal to B, then your code will jump to case B. Then, for each case, we would add a thing called a break to exit out of your switch statement and continue on with the rest of your code. Lastly, you can write a default case to handle any other outcome that isn't taken care of by the other cases. And it's important to note that if the default statement is used as the last statement in a switch block, it doesn't need a break because the program will just execute its code and move on with the rest of your program. Here's an example. So our friend Kevin is a busy blub with many jobs and he needs help remembering which job he has to do each day of the week. We can help him keep track of his jobs with a switch case. First, we initialize our switch statement by stating the word switch. Then it's followed by an expression that we want to check inside our parentheses. In our case, we want to check what day our variable is. Then, we fill our switch statement with different cases. If the day is Monday, then our program will tell Kevin to work at the cafe. But if we change the day to Tuesday, then it will tell Kevin to work at the pizza parlor. If it's Friday, he'll work at the movies. However, if it's a day that doesn't have a specific case, like Saturday, then Kevin gets to relax. Here's another example, but with numbers. Let's say we're trying to order a combo meal from Blub's Pizza. Here we have a variable to tell our switch statement the combo number we want, and a variable to store our order. If our combo number is 1, we'll get one pizza with a soda and our code will break out of the switch case. But if our combo number is 2, we'll get two pizzas with two sodas, then break. And finally, if our combo number is 3, we'll get three pizzas with three sodas, then break. Notice, we actually don't include a default case here. If the switch statement checks for a number that doesn't have a corresponding case, it'll just skip over the switch statement entirely. And that's pretty much it for switch cases. Yes, Kevin? How do you know when to use an if statement or a switch case? Well, Kevin, it depends on what you're programming. As a rule of thumb, if you have only a few conditions to check, you're better off using if-else statements. But 
If your code is just a long list of five or more if-else statements, you're better off using switch cases. Switch statements can be more efficient than writing a bunch of if-else statements when used at the right time. This is because a computer reads code from top to bottom, sort of like a script. So with a long series of if-else statements, it could take your computer a long time to read your code, since it has to check for every single condition until it finds a condition that works. But if you had a switch case instead, your computer could just jump to a value that you specified and skip the rest, making it faster in some cases. So imagine Kevin's trying to deliver a pizza, and he has to check each house on the block to see if they ordered a pizza. We can use a chain of if-else statements to represent this. If house 1 ordered the pizza, then deliver the pizza to house 1. But since house 3 ordered the pizza instead, he has to keep checking each house until he gets to house 3. This doesn't sound so bad with smaller numbers, but if Kevin wanted to deliver to house 515, he would have to check every single house in between until he found the right house, making the customer very upset that their pizza took forever to get there, thus leaving Kevin a bad tip. Now, if Kevin checked what house ordered the pizza like a switch statement, Kevin could just check what house he needs to go to, then drive straight there rather than checking the houses one by one like he did with the if-else statements. Using this method makes the delivery very quick, leaving Kevin with some big money. And that's switch statements in a nutshell. We hope you've learned something, and if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll know when our next video comes out. And we'll see you again in the next one. Say bye, Kevin. Bye.